For free-to-play players or for players that are just newer to the game, you don't have the luxury of maxing out every single commander you get your hands on. So in this video, we're going to give you the top seven legendary pairs where you can use unmaxed commanders, either leaving them unmaxed and still using them anyways, or as a stepping stone to making them expertise. Stick around for the best pairs. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and this is the tail end of Commander Week. Earlier, we talked about the best 5551 legendaries, then the best 5511 legendaries. Then we even talked about risky commander investments where you do some weird combinations of skills, and now we smash it all together and give you the very best commander pairs where you don't have to max either both of the legendaries or any of the legendaries to get a ton of value if you like. Rise of Kingdoms guides designed to help you get value and smash your enemies, then consider smashing that subscribe button and throwing a like on the video to show your support. It's 100% free. You can always unsubscribe later. So literally, what are you waiting for? Let's get into number seven. The seventh best pair on the list. It's not a coincidence. I have Richard the First up on the screen. He was in the 5511 list. He was in the 5551 list. Richard the First with either Joan of Arc or Ethelfled, she would be max. She's free to play to max. That's free. That's okay. Or using Mulan as a 5511 as the secondary would be amazing. This is going to cost you, depending on how far you invest in your Richard, somewhere between 200 to 390 sculptures to have either the first two or first three skills maxed. I'm recommending this pair to you for a number of reasons. First of all, it's very good in the early game. You are going to be doing a lot of debuffing, a lot of buffing. It's a relatively powerful march at the start of the game in Rise of Kingdoms. And Richard I will hold relevance all throughout your time in Rise of Kingdoms. Even for barb chaining later on, Richard I will still be relevant for getting value. Although Richard I is not one of my top long-term investments in the game, at 200 sculptures, if you needed some punch in the early game to just max the first two skills, I think it would be very reasonable to be using that Richard I Joan of Arc combo, which you could use, by the way, for the rest of time in your Canyon lineup and be in a really great place. But if you wanted something slightly better than the Richard I and you had a little bit more patience, if you had the ability to pull down some sculptures from the Mightiest Governor, you might want to look at a Constantine Joan of Arc as my number six pairing of unmaxed legendary commanders. This is going to clock in at, again, about 200 to 390 legendary commander sculptures, depending on whether or not you're going to just max the first two skills on Constantine or take the risky gamble and go for the first two skills maxed and try to get the last skill maxed as well without having any points land on this garrison skill. That's a little bit more risky and is honestly not all that needed. Yeah, it's a little bit better in Canyon. I get it. But that's a part of the reason why this combination is better than the Richard the First. Because the only thing better than the Richard Joan combo is the Constantine Joan combo in Canyon for a very, very, very long time. Now, I mentioned you could use either Ethelfled maxed as a secondary to Constantine. Great way to hide her and do lots of damage. Also, you could use a Mulan, only getting her through gold sculptures, by the way, and use like a 5-5-1-1 Mulan as the secondary. I think that would be also fine for your Constantine. You get some pretty sweet value with this pairing. It's used in the field, although, honestly, you're, you're kind of like slow and a little bit of a punching bag. The buffs and debuffs are amazing. Even if you just use that in Ark of Osiris and your Canyon lineup, a 5-5-1-1 Constantine is going to go a really long way just for that huge damage taken reduction effect that hits a total of five marches, starting with your own and then to your friends. Now, with either of the combos I mentioned so far, you could, by the way, be using an Alexander the Great unmaxed as a secondary, and it would be very good, but I would look at you funny and wonder... Why haven't you just maxed your Alexander the Great before you start dumping sculptures into other commanders? I think that is, if you're going to use Alexander the Great at all, a better project to just go and max him. Now, I debated whether or not to put this next 
pair on the list, but I think it does belong, and I think it belongs in the number five spot, and that is going to be Trajan with Ethelfled. This is going to be somewhere between 200 to 390 sculptures, depending on whether or not you want to max two skills or three skills. I think this will be something you do as a stepping stone toward working towards a maxed Trajan. And I personally am using Trajan with Ethel on my restart project. It's now 72 million power. It's really grown quite a bit at this point. But I'm using this combo, and it's very good. I use this combo in Ark of Osiris as well. It's extremely strong. Doesn't have as much march speed, which is a little bit of a bummer. But let me tell you, the buffing is insane. It's so strong. Joan of Arc is good, but in my estimation, Trajan is better. This pair is a tier above the other pairs that I offered you in this video. Uh, better than the Richard combos, better than the Constantine combos. Trajan is very, very solid. And perhaps even better, this gives you, honestly, the very top tier way to mobilize your Ethelflaed to get some maximum value, in my estimation, is to make it a secondary to Trajan. Now, when it comes to Trajan's skills, by the way, you could make an argument that you might care about the fourth skill more than you care about the third skill on Trajan. So you might say, like, yeah, I want to max the first two skills, and then I kind of don't care where these last points land. I think that would be perfectly reasonable. And again, I want to emphasize that if you're investing in Trajan, the goal should not be to stop in an unmaxed state. You should make your way to a max Trajan. But if, you know, you're working your way there over time, and you pause to work on some other project, I think that would be okay. Getting that Trajan to 5551 five, is probably what I would recommend, closer to that 390 mark, and then slowly work toward his expertise. Clocking in at number four is a top tier pair, although it will be harder to gain access to. And it's gonna be a very small number of sculptures to invest in this. At number four, I've got Artemisia with Tamaris. In a best case, this could run you as low as 400 sculptures. Why do I like the Artemisia Tamaris combo? Really, this is all about Tamaris's debuff. And in my video about risky commander investments and doing skill resets, I talked about how low the chances are to actually successfully land on either a 5 1 5 5 combo or in Tamaris's case, 5115. The chances are really low. And I actually had some folks follow up with the dude I worked with to do the math. That's BYG Pi. And act, they actually ran some simulations. And we found that it was closer to actually a 2 ish percent chance to get a 5155 legendary. So, so, all that to say, the chances are just really low that you can land on that perfect configuration. But if you did, have both of these mightiest governor commanders. You take uh, Artemisia to 5511. You work on your Tamaris, maxing the first skill and then applying skills until you end up with this last skill maxed and hopefully the rest end up over here and maybe you need to use a few skill resets to get lucky there. That would not be uh, such a bad combination to have. You apply one of the very best debuffs in the game, making targets take an upwards of 45% extra skill damage. And the reason that Artemisia is the pairing is that Artemisia has a self-silence. So not only is she low sculpture, not only could you invest further in her, and that would be a fine thing to do, um, but this self-silence makes it so that those stacks of poison get higher than 10, which is why they are a really strong combo. The thing that I don't like about them as a combo, and why I wouldn't recommend this to most people actually, is that they're both Mightiest Governor Commanders. For people that are looking at these combinations and, and looking at unmaxed legendaries, they might be very hard to obtain. There's a lot of luck involved in getting those commanders to the skill levels you want. And Tamaris is maybe not such a great long-term investment in Rise of Kingdoms. I mean, her debuff is amazing, but she's sort of inflexible as a commander. You can't pair her with tons of other commanders like Esong and just get value every, anywhere you put her, you know? Not in the same way. So in that regard, I'll give you a few alternatives. In this same number four pick here, approximately as powerful in my estimation, that are probably easier to get. And honestly, instead of Tamaris, you could use Nabu as a secondary. You could use Cyrus. 
You could use Ramses. I mean, pretty much any of the Archer Commanders are a good substitution, assuming you had access to Artemisia. And I'll be honest, I think the reality for a lot of newer players to the game is that they've got their Esong maxed. Of course you do. It's the first legendary you should max, right? So a more realistic starting point, or even end point, is to have Artemisia as a 5-5, 1-1, and then to use the E-Song as the secondary for the Artemisia. I think that would be perfectly reasonable, depending on whether or not you are actually using NL Sid to pair with E-Song as your Archer pairing, which is also reasonable, but might make you a little bit of a target. It honestly depends on where you've deployed the commanders that you've already got at your disposal. If you were looking to invest in a brand new pair of archers, however, and you only had access to Wheel of Fortune commanders, then you might look at a commander pairing like Cyrus with Ramses. There's a lot of single target damage for my liking, but they're both really good, Cyrus and Ramses, in the open field. Even unmaxed, they're really quite strong. So the archers have a lot of ability to play well with each other, even in unmaxed states. And although Artemisia and Tamaris would be stuck together in a lot of ways if you pair them together, unless they release some other archer that has a delay to their active skills, I still think they would be a very strong combo to have in your arsenal. But now we make our way into the top three, and here's where things really escalate in terms of the quality of the marches, where I think everybody would kind of unanimously agree that although they might not agree with my ordering of these uh, pairings, uh, that they are probably the right pairings to have in the top three. And at number three is going to be Guan with Leo. You knew I was going to put Leo in here, right? You knew I was going to do that because that dude, he was my number one pick as a 5-5-1-1 legendary Leonidas, baby. Really strong. Also, the Guan, you need to end up in a perfect world with 5155. So this is more sculptures in total. You're looking at 390 on your Guan. You're looking at 200 on your Leonidas. So 590 sculptures in total, and you end up in a pretty decent spot. You've got a Guan that's pretty freaking awesome, a Leonidas who's not all that different than when he's maxed. That pair is sick. So good. I will say, however, that a lot of people are going to have already invested in Alexander the Great. He'll either be expertised or on his way to expertise. And I think it will be very reasonable to pair either a maxed or unmaxed Alexander the Great as a secondary to Guan Yu. And I think nobody would argue that that is a top tier combination. And although this list is the best non-maxed legendary pairs, you could be using a non-maxed Alex, and that would be perfectly fine as a secondary to Guan. The biggest downfall really with using the Guan and having him unmaxed is that there's a lot of risk when you're working on his skills. This is mitigated um, either by skill resets or by saying, you know what, if I end up in a really bad spot, my skill resets don't uh, make it so I avoid this second skill, then in a worst case, you say, you know what, I'm going to max him. It's not the end of the world. He's a great commander maxed as well. That would be perfectly reasonable as a mitigation for the reality that some number of people are just going to get really unlucky and have a ton of points end up in this second skill. But clocking in at number two is going to be a unit type we haven't seen yet on my list, and that is going to be cavalry. Now, the pair we're going to use is going to have a William secondary. You always want William as the secondary. Trust me, I tested with him as primary. It's not very good, and it makes him a target, which is also not good. It's going to be a William secondary. The beauty of William, by the way, is that you could use him 5-5-1-1. I think he's way better as a 5-5-5-1, but you could work on him over time, and he's really strong, even on max. You're getting a lot of his value, but the primary is going to be a new Cav Commander that's really popular, it's XY, baby. XY Primary. Now, the downside here is that you are going to have to get kind of lucky to land on a 5515. You might need some skill resets. You might have to resign yourself to eventually max him to make up for these skills landing in the wrong places, potentially, and be just being really unlucky with how that works out. You might have to resign yourself to that. However... XY primary, William secondary, is really beast. It does a ton of damage. It's a little vulnerable. It's a little squishy. Okay, so you got to be open to a combo that is 
maybe at risk of getting kind of focused out. Don't worry, I'll have a tanky version of this coming up real soon. This risk of the XY is mitigated, again, with having lots of skill resets or by resigning yourself to maxing him and then having the unmaxed William is perfectly reasonable. The other thing I really like about this pairing and as a part of the reason I have it at number two is that, honestly, both of these commanders will be great when you max them. So they're good to start with early and you have a Cav March and that Cav March is really great. They both come from the Wheel of Fortune. Very uh, easy to get these commanders. And then over time, you can work on maxing them and this will be a nice Cav March to add to your roster. But the number one pair has no risk whatsoever, baby. And it also involves calves. That's the good old Saladin William. I think you knew I was going to give this as the recommendation, right? Saladin, top tier because he's got the support tree and because he's very tanky, which for cavalry is very good. The support tree is not only giving you rage generation, but if you're micromanaging marches and like, look, let's be honest, players that are looking at unmaxed legendaries are generally having fewer marches but paying closer attention to them because there's less things they have to manage all at once. You will probably take great advantage of the fact that you could use hasty departure talents to go from resource nodes and other uh, things like cities to navigate around the battlefield more elegantly and quickly and to get out of bad situations. So I like Saladin Primary. I also really like William Primary. Both of these commanders, as I was describing, you could use 5511 or 5551. And due to the skill lock system, the good news is that when you're ready to max out that third skill, you don't have to have any fear of points going into the fourth skill. Salad and William, number one pick, and it's very, very strong. I will give you an alternative to the William, which would be even less sculptures, because what I'm recommending, by the way, is 390 sculptures on the Saladin, 390 sculptures on the William. You'd probably plan to expertise the William at some point, and you'll probably leave the Saladin as a 5-5, five, 5-1, five, five, and just call it a day. Even though the max version is better, it is a lot of sculptures, another 310 to finish that project off. You'd probably just leave him as he is, as a 5-5, five, 5-1. Five, five, what you could do, however, as an alternative, and... I, I don't think this is a number one spot, but I think this is worthy of a mention is that you could use the salad in primary and then put XY behind him as the secondary. And although I prefer the William, let me just be very clear about that. XY has a great AOE. It's going to reduce the defensive targets. And if you leave XY as 5510, which you can do with using him as the secondary, he doesn't have to be leveled up. You get the advantage of all of the march speed, the attack boost. You get the AoE damage, which is really nice, and none of the march speed reduction. Now, you also don't get the rage reduction, which is really valuable to you. You don't get the damage boost, which is valuable to you, but it's way less sculptures, 200 sculptures for a 5510XY. Using him as a secondary to Saladin is honestly something that is worthy of consideration. Also worthy, however, of men mentioning there is that you probably want to, over time, plan to take XY to 5515. I don't really think that in the long term, if you're only going to use a small number of marches, you should plan to leave XY as the secondary in that combo in kind of that unmaxed state. I'll mention again that I didn't really com include commanders like Esong or Alexander the Great on this list because... I mean, look, like you should just max those commanders. I think it's universally accepted that those are exceptional investments. In fact, your first investment should just be Esong. You sh you could consider skipping Alexander the Great, but I think almost everybody's going to be like, why would you do that? Just max Alexander the Great, just saying. So I think those are great starting investments that have a ton of value in Rise of Kingdoms. And from there, using the pairs we've recommended in an unmaxed state with either the game plan to max them over the long term, which I think is a good play, or to leave them in their unmaxed capacity is still a solid plan. If there's any other pairs that I missed, though, certainly let me know down below in the comments. I know a bunch of people were asking for a 5111 Legendary Guide. In general, I wouldn't recommend using 5111 Legendaries, although they, there are some cases where they might be better than Epics. 
Let me know if that's something you're definitely interested in and we could look into a video about that. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing for those daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.